Okay, thank you all. I'm informed that our court reporter is on our uh, uh, WebEx connection. So let's go on the record. Uh, today is July 29th, 2024, and the Missouri Public Service Commission has set this time for a local public hearing to give members of the public a chance to comment about Evergy Missouri West's general rate increase application. And that is file number ER-2024-0189. The commission regulates the rates charged by public utility companies in Missouri to ensure that those rates are just and reasonable. The commission also regulates the quality of service and safety of the operations of public utilities. There are five commissioners. They are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate. The commissioners employ a staff of engineers, accountants, attorneys, financial analysts, and other specialists in the field of utility regulation. My name is Charles Hatcher. I am the regulatory law judge that will preside over this hearing. With me today are Chair Kayla Hahn, Commissioner Glenn Kolkmeyer, and online we have Commissioner Maida Coleman and Commissioner Jason Holzman. The commissioners have not made any decisions in this case, and they cannot answer any questions today because they have to remain impartial until after all of the evidence is presented. Let's go ahead and start with our council's entry of appearance for Evergy Missouri West. Good evening. My name is Roger Steiner. I am the attorney for the applicant, Evergy Missouri West. My address is 1200 Main Street, Kansas City, Missouri, 64105. Thank you. And for the staff of the commission. Yes, Judge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeff Keevil, representing staff of the Missouri Public Service Commission. Our address is uh, Governor Office Building, Suite 800, 200 Madison Street, P.O. Box 360, Jefferson City, Missouri, 65102. Thank you. And the Office of the Public Council. John Kleiser, on behalf of the Missouri Office of the Public Council, my contact information is reflected in the record. Thank you. Before I move on to take the comments, we do have several intervening companies that are intervening parties in this rate case. If any of them are in attendance and would like to enter their appearance, please do so now. Thank you. The process for this hearing will be calling the names on the sign-up sheet in the order they appear. This is the sign-up sheet that was at the front um, entrance hall when everyone came in. When I call your name, please go on uh, and step up to the microphone. I'll then ask for you to state and spell your name for the record. Uh, after that, I'll place you under oath and ask you to go ahead and offer your comments to the commissioners. If you did not sign up to give comments, that's okay. I will ask at the end of these five names if anyone else would like to give testimony. And if it turns out that um, testifying in public isn't uh, your forte. I'll give you information at the end of the hearing on how to submit written comments. With that, let's go ahead and start our uh, witness list. The first name I have is Dean Von... Exactly. Sir, if you would please uh, state and spell your name for the record. My name is Dean Van Skoik, D-E-A-N, capital V-A-N, capital S-C-H-O-I-A-C-K. I'm the 9th District State Representative, representing the counties, the people of the counties of Andrew DeCab and Northern Clinton. Thank you, and if you would please raise your right hand, I'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, and please go ahead and give the commissioners your comments. Commissioners, thank you for hearing us today. We appreciate that very much. Um, my, my comments are basically directed to you. Um, I know that uh, we've had great cases before with Evergy in the recent past, 
you have received a letter from me from my office last year about the time of use rates. And this is something that uh, I want to address. People are not liking it. People are not saving money with it. It's costing people more money. It's not having the effect that I'm told it was to have had to make rates more affordable for people. That is not happening. I've not had anybody come to me and say, gee, I love time of use rates and they're, they're just great. No, everybody's against them, nobody likes them. Um, one thing that you did do that I appreciated was that you said that people could change any time they wanted to. They could change plans any time they wanted to. Well, to start out, that was true. I changed plans back, I think, in probably October, November, when it started to get cold. I said, you know, we're not shutting the furnace off this winter. We're going to keep it on. We'll do the level pay plan for the winter and do that. I put a request in online to do that. The very next day, we were switched over to that plan, just as it said we could be. So spring comes around. I said, gee, we want to go back to the, uh, the weekend saver plan that uh, we've been using before. And so I contacted Evergy and they said that, uh, well, you'll be switched back at your next building cycle. Not the next day, the next building cycle. I contacted the Evergy representative about that and he told me that, that the uh, commission had informed them that uh, they really didn't mean that you could switch any time you wanted to, only that you could switch any billing cycle you wanted to. So that's confusing to people, and uh, it was very confusing to me, certainly, and I know other folks as well. We've got folks turning off the their furnace in the wintertime. We're turning off our air conditioning in the summertime. Is this really the kind of thing we want to put upon the people of Missouri, that they're going to need to do this, that they're going to need to swelter in their summer heat and freeze in winter's cold so they don't have to pay more money for their electricity. That's what time of use does. And that's the way the people look at it that I've talked to. Um, during the question and answer session, I questioned the Office of Count Public Counsel and the PSC staff representative. I was interested to find that the staff consider themselves independent of the commission. I just heard that they're employed by the commission, which would lead me to believe that they're not independent of the commission, that they're actually employees of and work for the commission, and I would hope that they would advise the commission. Um, I have questions about how efficiently, effectively the public Office of Public Counsel has stood up for the public in uh, past hearings. I hope that he's done a good job but yet we have questions about that. We've had bills before us in the legislature this last year to restructure the PSC. We've taken a good hard look at that. We will continue to take a good hard look at that. Many are not, ups not happy at all with some of the decisions, especially the time of use rates decision that has been forced upon the people who are customers of Evergy and it's my understanding they're going to be forced upon Ameren customers as well. And um, I think that we need to take another look at that and look at why we're here. We're here to protect the public. That should be number one, protect the public. When you make your decisions, I hope that you make every decision with the public's interest in mind as the utmost thing that you need to be worried about. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Are there any commissioner questions for the representative? Thank you, sir. You're Thank dismissed you. from our witness stand. Uh, Kelly Smith. Ma'am, if you would please state and spell your name for the record. Yes, my name is Kelly Smith, K-E-L-R-Y, last name Smith, S-M-I-T-H. Thank you, Ms. Smith, and I'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please go ahead and proceed with your comments. Okay, so my comment is I am 100% against a rate hike. 
Um, I'm going to go over some reasons why. So first off, um, part of it is what I do for a living. See, I'm licensed in life and health insurance. Okay, so what I do is I sell Medicare Advantage plans to our seniors. Okay, it is a heartbreaking job every day, day in, day out, when you talk to them and they can't afford things because they are on a fixed income. Okay, me, I can work a second, third job. Is that what you want? That's what I already do. Okay, um, I do about any gig. I actually have a dog at my house that was from Rover because I have to. Um, you know, laugh, but it's not funny. I drive Walmart for Spark. I door dash. I lift. I can prove all of this because I have to because things are expensive right now. It is not the right time. When I'm talking to one of my people who, you know, their medication is very expensive. Maybe it's a tier four medication. That's $95. What medication are they not getting this month? I'm not a pharmacist. I'm not their doctor. I try and find them ways to save on their medication with the name that I have. Some of their medication is $45. You'd be surprised how much medication some people have to take. Okay, fixed income people, which there's a lot around, they cannot afford it. Yeah, I can work myself to the bone. When I got off of one job today, I went to another job today. Okay, that's not living, that's not life. So I oppose it. Um, first off, one of the reasons I'm in opposition of this, I'm all electric. I had their nice pays program come out to my house to see how I could save money. I can't. My house is 100% in my every room in the house. I have a ceiling fan because that's supposed to help with one LED bulb, not four bulbs, one. All the ceiling fans, okay, with one. And the first thing he said, oh, you have LED bulbs. Yeah, it's very dim in here. Hope it's light outside because with one bulb running in the rooms, it is dim. It's a one level three bedroom, concrete slab, no basement, two car attached garage. My bill is just shy of $300. I'm, I work all the time, I'm hardly ever home. I have a Nest thermostat, that was supposed to be great. It's set at 74 to 75 degrees all the time. I don't cook from four to 8 p.m. unless I grill out because I can't afford to turn on the air fryer or the stove or the oven. I simply cannot afford to. My day starts at 6 a.m. Come about 5 o'clock, I'm hangry. I want to eat, but I can't because I have to wait. I don't do laundry until it's a weekend. Okay, I have already uprooted so many things and so have so many people. We can't keep doing this. We cannot afford 14, 17, 5%. Can't afford it. Um, when the all electric plan went away, you did get a rate hike. A rate hike went in effect for many of us who were on the all electric. So you did get one. Um, you know, the pays program said there's absolutely nothing I can do. I can't even upgrade my heating and air unit because it's already efficient enough. I can't upgrade a single appliance because it's already efficient enough. Um, you know, I would think, you know, I, I understand there's been a lot of bad weather. I get it. We're in the Midwest. You know, there's bad weather. Um, welcome to life. We weather storms every day as people. Do we pick between are we eating or are we paying our power bill? You know, um, Evergy claims they have all these programs. They're not Evergy programs. First off, they tell me, well, you make too much. Really, then why am I scrimping and saving and cutting down on groceries and saying, you know, surfing Facebook and Google for cheap meal ideas, budget meal ideas for 2024, not 2022? 
Why am I doing that constantly before I make a grocery list? Why am I suffering to pay a power bill? Because the programs that they send you to, which are not Evergy, they send you, they, oh, you make too much. Okay, so I'm the working poor, yay me. I still can't afford a rate hike. Um, you know, earlier they said that these things are 50, 60, 70 years old. Well, you should have been planning your business. I'm sorry, you should have been planning. Um, you knew this time was coming. Don't hit us with all this all at once because all people are reeling right now as it is. You know, everybody wants their piece of the pie, and I feel like this is Evergy just asking for their piece of the pie because everybody else is. Um, now is not the right time. They showed a slide that said South Dakota. Uh, yeah, they showed Texas and Oklahoma rates went up. They showed South Dakota went down 10%, or sorry, it was North Dakota. Let's be like North Dakota. Let's give everybody a break. You know, um, what can they do to change their finances? Because I know I've had to do a lot to change mine. So what can they do to change theirs that they don't have to pass this on to all the customers who have no choice and have to use them? I mean, because it's, you know, we gotta have power. Um, so I feel it should be a 0% increase and it should be maybe even a decrease because this is out of control. It is out of hand. And when people, including myself, have to pick and choose, well, do we wanna keep the power on or I don't know, um, eat. And that's real, that's reality. I'll be glad to show anybody my checkbook. Yeah, I still have one. Um, I'll be glad to show you. I'm tired of working all the time. Why can't I start enjoying life too? Because I do work for a living. Why can't our seniors who are on fixed income or people on disability on fixed income, why can't they enjoy life too? They deserve it, just as everyone else. Why does it have to be pick and choose if you're eating or you're paying your power bill? That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Are there any questions from commissioners? Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your testifying. The next name I have is James Widinger. Mr. Widinger, if you would please state and spell your name, please, for the record. My name is James, J A M E S, Widinger, W E I D I N G. E R. German name. Thank you. I apologize for that, Mr. No, Wadding. No, you were right on. Oh well, uh, good for me. Thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. If you'd like to go ahead and please give us your comments. Yes. Thank you, Commission, for coming and letting the people talk to you. I appreciate that. I am a customer of, of this company, and they are a good company. They have always provided power, even in the storms and when I thought other people were in other states were out of power. I thank them that in Missouri we had power but it's getting to the point where affordability is an issue. As it was said before, I am one of the persons that are on a fixed income. I don't begrudge the company a profit, and I don't know, I'll rely on you commissioners to decide how much that will be. I understand it's not a take all or nothing that you are able to make some adjustments to that. And you all are in a better position than what I am to do that. All I can say is my personal experience. And 
I have done everything that I could to reduce my bill to save electricity with the company's help. And I feel for the company too because I was paying $4 for gas. I think it's down to $3 now for gas. And I think that uh, the company will realize some of those profits and hopefully, or savings, excuse me, savings, that they will use those in a prudent manner to invest in their structure. My point is I am willing to pay what rate is as a reasonable amount to have the services. But I think that I am living in America and you all are listening to me about my position. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wadinger. Are there any questions? No, thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming to testify tonight. Next we have David Hopper. Thank you, sir. If you would please state and spell your name for the record. David Hopper, Sr., D-A-B-I-D, H-O-P-P-E-R-S-R. Thank you, Mr. Hopper, and let me swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please go ahead with your comments. My comment is my bill is $715 for one month. I'm on disability, me and my wife. And the time we pay the bills, we don't have nothing to eat, so I have to ask for handouts. That's all I got. Thank you, sir, for, for coming up. I appreciate that. That that's okay. I we don't have any questions. The next name I have on the list is Maudie Schubert. Yes, you did. Thank you. If you could uh, state and spell your name for the record, please. Maudie Schubert, M-A-U-D-I-E-S-C-H-U-B-E-R-T. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm going to go ahead and swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Please go ahead with your comments. Comments is I can't afford another rate increase. I'm total electric. I'm on disability. And uh, right now it's canning season, you know, all prices going up, food even. So one brother has planted a garden and I'm canning. Well, guess what? I got to wait till two or three o'clock in the morning to turn the stove on to can. <laughs> Gets a little inconvenient though. Uh, I shut everything off between four and eight. That way I keep the uh, cost down. My bill jumped from last month to this month almost $200 and I shut everything off. I don't watch TV. I don't sit at all the rooms. Lights are off. We've got one light on in the kitchen, none in the living room, none in the bedroom. Everything's off. My light bill jumped. I, I just can't afford it. I mean, and uh, she mentioned medicine. People pick and choose. I have a lot of health issues, and I have to pick and choose what medicine I, ha I can pay for and my doctors knows this too so because I've got heart issues I got breathing issues I had lung cancer a partial lung removal got to go to chemotherapy in the morning so and then I have um, also neurological issues as well so it, it's it's devastating I just can't afford it and I'm by myself and that's all I got Thank you, ma'am. Are there any questions? Thank you for coming to testify tonight. We appreciate that. That was the end of our list of witnesses who had signed up. Um, as I mentioned before, I would like to invite anyone who is in the audience who
who did not sign up, if uh, you have been so moved to testify, um, please come on forward and you've seen the process. We'll take your name and I'll swear you in. I understand that can be a little intimidating. That's okay. Yes, ma'am, come on, come on forward, please. My name is Diana Latham, D-I-A-N-A-L-A-T-H-A-M. I live in St. Joseph, Missouri. I'm 67 years old. I am retired, and my husband is retired. Ms. Latham, yes. can I swear you in real quick? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the yes. testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. First of all, I get $800 a month. By the time I pay my um, insurance, I'm left with $500 in my pocket. My husband's a little bit better off than that. But we still try to keep our household to a minimal on gas and electricity. We're on the four to eight. We don't do anything between that time. We don't do laundry. We don't dry things. We don't do anything. So the the hike went the hike went up in January, February. So now you want another hike. I think there should be a cap put on this for the people of St. Joe. Because there's so many low income people in this town that they can't afford to be housed. They can't afford to rent anywhere. They can't afford food. They, they just can't afford it. We have a lot of people with disabilities, a lot of people that are retired, just a whole lot of homeless people. And I work with the homeless people. I represent 8th Street Backpackers. That's my group that I run. And I help clothe these people and give them shoes and everything else. I asked them why they're not being housed. Well, the housing is so messed up that there's people out there that's waiting five years. And even if they did get housed, their disability is so low that they can't afford the electricity once they do pay their rent. And if some of them can pay their utilities, like just lights, they can't afford food, even though they get food stamps. My son is on disability for a number of disabilities, and he gets $50 a month for food stamps. That's it. Yes, you can go to InnerServe, and you can go to other places and get food, but he gets a small little box of beans, rice, maybe some, a, a bag of, small bag of meat that he can eat and he's lacking two or three weeks. I have to supplement his food. Everything has gone up so high in the United States that people just absolutely cannot afford to pay more. We watch what we do, we limit what we do. We just can't afford it. And you have on the list one person in a family size has $30,000 a year. Most people don't make that. I don't have the numbers, but people make about 15, 20 maybe with one person in the household. And they're struggling. If they've got kids, they're struggling to pay child support, pay for food, pay for medical, pay for anything the kids need for school. They are not college degree people. That's what most of downtown area is, is non-college people. They're just typical normal people that want to live and be able to pay the rent and pay the utilities and not have to go into some sort of one building housing where there's drugs and alcohol and abuse and it's all kinds of rapid things that go on there. You, you wouldn't even want to walk through there even during the daytime. So why would these people want to take their children and live in a building like that? They are trying to make it. They are working. 
And if they happen to have two people in the household, they are definitely not making 40000 maybe thirty, if that. Because of this rate hike, I have considered in my household to have a wood stove, to use my fireplace, because it's gas, to heat with. I have lanterns, I have candles, because I'm tired of paying out all these high utility bills. And so are a lot of other people. I'm here to represent the poor people in this, in this town. And I'm telling you, they cannot afford this high rate. And even if they can go to CAP and get some help, they have minimal time, a certain timeline, they can go get the help that the government's paying for, us taxpayers are paying for it, to pay y'all. And to pay the people that can't afford it. How do I know? I raised three children, single, disabled. I did everything I could to save money. And I had to go to CAP and ask to get help with my electricity. We cooled two rooms with a window air conditioner. That's it. That's it. We kept everything to the lowest minimum, everything possible. And that's the way a lot of people are now. They're trying to live on the edge of being scared to turn on a light, being scared to do laundry, being scared to cook. It's ridiculous. Then now we all want another raise hike. Let's, yeah, let's just put it on the people. When do we get to vote for this? Y'all vote for it. When do we get to vote for this? I'm voting no. I'm voting a cap on electrical bills. That's what I want. And I would imagine a lot of other people would too. There's a lot of people that's destitute in this, in this town. And there's a lot more coming out homeless because they couldn't pay utility bills. They come in and sh they, sh they shut you off and then they're out on the street because they get evicted. Same way with the water bill. I know tons of people that's out there on the street now because their electricity gets turned out cause, off because they couldn't afford to pay it. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about young people on drugs. I'm talking about elderly people. People that are married, couples, single, I'm voting no on this, and I hope y'all do too, because St. Joe can't afford this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latham. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. We have once again come to the end of our witness list. I'll ask again if there's anyone in the audience who would like to testify. If not, and you would still like to make a comment or you know someone at home who couldn't be here who would like to make a comment to the commission, uh, you can make written comments. This case is still ongoing. You can go to the PSC's website, that's psc.mo.gov, and in the upper right-hand corner of that page is a link that says Submit Comments. And I would ask that you just put the case number for this case, and that is ER-2024-0189. And your comments will get into the case file. Are there any closing comments from our commissioners? Um, good evening. I know we're wrapping up here. Um, I just want to Thank you all for coming tonight. I know you could have chosen to do any number of things tonight, spend it with your family, do your second or third job, um, any host of things, but instead you chose to come and uh, spend your time with us, helping educate us about your service and about your thoughts on this case. 
And unless we talk to you, we don't necessarily get that input. And so we appreciate it, and we'll take it into consideration. Thank you all so much. Yes, I uh, want to echo the chairman's um, comments. I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening and, and giving us your comments and your testimony on, on this case. So, again, thank you for coming out. Thank you all. And with that, we will go ahead and adjourn the hearing. Uh, let's go off the record.